in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen greetings of peace and joy my brothers and sisters are there moments in your life when you have spoken something you felt oh i should not have spoken that way are there moments in your life when you did something and later on you felt oh i should have done differently if you have ever felt i should have spoken in a better way i should have done something in a better way the virtue that is lacking is the virtue of prudence today's gospel passage gospel of saint matthew chapter 22 verses 15 to 22 gives us an occasion to reflect on this intellectual virtue the virtue of prudence we have discussed various other virtues in the life of jesus but today's gospel passage invites us to reflect on the an intellectual virtue the virtue of prudence other virtues that is related to virtue of prudence would be virtue of wisdom virtue of discretion virtue of right judgment virtue of counsel these are all related virtues we need the virtue of prudence in our life saint thomas aquinas a great dominican saint he describes virtue of prudence as a correct judgment correct judgment he says it is an intellectual virtue that allows us to recognize the good and evil possibilities in every situation and to act correctly in accordance with god's will how important that we make right judgment and act in accordance with god's will very many times because we lack virtue of prudence we have fallen into pits so as we reflect on the gospel passage of the day let us pray that the lord may bless us with the virtue of prudence maybe a simple word that we can use for the virtue of prudence is common sense common sense when we lack common sense we make mistakes just as solomon in the old testament prayed to the lord god lord give me wisdom give me wisdom so that i can make right judgment let us also pray in various life situations of our life we can make right judgment years back when i was a student brother i remember a senior priest advised to me that a prudent person that a prudent person will not take decision when he is disappointed i still remember that advice and i believe that why because there are moments our reason is not working when our emotions are flared up when our emotions are flared up our reason will not work and if our reason is not working and if you make a judgment if you make a decision if you speak something we can make serious mistakes therefore a prudent person will not react or will not make a decision when he is deeply disappointed when he is angry when he is faced with a, a failure when he is in lust these are all moments when our emotions are flared up we should not make a hasty hasty decision and then fall into a trap having reflected that much about the basics of uh, virtue of prudence let us come to the gospel passage gospel is in matthew chapter 22 where we see the pharisees and the herodians coming together pharisees and the herodians were enemies but jesus their common enemy brought them together pharisees opposed the the roman taxes the tax to caesar they opposed whereas herodians were a party that supported herod and herod had received his authority from caesar so herodians supported paying tax to caesar so they had contradictory view points about paying tax pharisees supposed herodians supported the tax to the the roman government so it is easy to see that they picked up this issue of paying tax to trap jesus so the pharisees sent the herodians to ask ask these questions is it right to pay tax in whichever side jesus take he was going to fall into a trouble if he opposes if he opposes paying the tax he will fall in trouble with the roman authorities 
if he supports if he supports paying tax to the roman authorities he is going to fall in trouble with the jews who oppose the roman rule so that is why this was a trap they came with a trap and these are the moments my sisters and brothers the virtue of prudence is important jesus was a man of god led by the holy spirit had the virtue of prudence so immediately he recognized they are asking a question not to get an answer but to trap so the lord responded the lord responded in the right manner he asked bring a coin looks at the coin and he says whose image is on that and they said yes it is caesar's so he said his reply was the simple profound reply he said jesus told them give to god what belongs to god and give to caesar what belongs to caesar give back to caesar what belongs to caesar and give to god what belongs to god a simple and profound reply that tells us three lessons three lessons for us to learn in our christian life in our discipleship in our following of christ three lessons first lesson christians must honor and obey the 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 rulers and the governors and legitimate authorities christian must christians must respect and obey the legitimate authorities i wish to take a passage from first peter chapter 2 verse 13 for the lord's sake to every human institution whether it be the emperor as supreme or to governors sent by him to punish those who do wrong and to praise those who do right the word of god invites us be subject to lords for the lord sakes to every human institution meaning to say we have a responsibility as christians to respect leaders governors uh, and uh, uh our legitimate authorities that also includes pay tax pay respect to them the second lesson that we can learn give to god but belongs to god just as it is important to pay tax so also it is important to give to god what belongs to god which we at times forget god's word again and again reminds us about the importance of paying the tithe which at times we as christians forget we think everything that we possess belong to us no one tenth of everything that we have belong to god he has a right he has given and we need to give back to god listen to book of malachi chapter chapter 3 verse 8 will man rob god yet you are robbing me but you say how are we robbing you in your tithes and in your offerings when we don't give tithe one tenth of what we have we are robbing god that belongs to god that we are not giving again only one place in the whole of bible the lord tells you can test me and what is it listen to this passage book of malachi chapter 3 verse 10 bring the full tithes into the storehouse that there be food in my house and thereby put me to the test the lord god says put me to the test says the lord god of hosts if i will not open the windows of heaven for you and pour down for you an overflowing blessing the lord says when you give one tenth of what you have to god you test god if he not if he will not open the doors and windows of heaven and pour down blessings upon us in my priestly life i have come across so many generous people our retreat center we we smoothly run our retreat center do the ministries that we do because so many of you have supported us generously may god bless you may god reward you as he so that poor widows two little coins and appreciated may the lord bless every person who come forward in supporting genuine cause we also read in the book of sirach this word of god book of sirach chapter 17 verse 22 
A man's alms giving is like a signet with the Lord, and he will keep a person's kindness like the apple of his eyes, and he will keep a person's kindness like the apple of his eye. When we give alms to the Lord, the Lord sees it. We read in the in the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 10, when the angel appeared to, to Cornelius, the angel said, Acts 10, 4, your prayers and your arms have ascended as a memorial before God. Your prayers and your arms have ascended as a memorial before God. When we give for God's glory, God sees and he will bless. So give to God what belongs to God. The third lesson from the passage is this. The Lord asked the people showing, asking them, looking at the coin, whose image is on that coin? They said Caesar's. Now, in the book of Genesis chapter 1 verse 26, Genesis 1 26, the Lord God said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness. Just as that coin contained Caesar's image, you and me, we have the image of God in us. Image of God is in us. Everything in us belongs to God. If Caesar's image made Jesus to say, give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, when the Lord sees us, he sees our image. We belong to God. We have the image and likeness of God. That is our identity. What does that say? Everything else we have in life, our money, our name, our fame, our talents, our skills, they all will come and go. They all will come and go. But the image of God with which you are created, your personhood, you as a person created in the image and likeness of God, that you will never lose. You belong to God. You belong to God. Therefore, everything you have belong to God. Glorify God in everything you do. Do everything for the greater glory of God. Let us always remember our identity as children of God created in the image and likeness of God and the breath of God is running within us. That is why we are alive. Let us glorify God in everything we do. Amen. God bless you.